Today's program is rated G. Well, technically, this show is always rated G, but let me put it this way. Today's show is dedicated to the young ones. We check in with a number of them to see them expanding their knowledge and building on skills and talents, and you don't want to miss any of that. Hi, I'm Theodore Henry, and your favorite magazine unfolds right now. We are children, and we have rights. We have a right to be protected, provided for, and included. Don't beat me up, don't belittle me, and please don't molest me. I am under 13. I should not be working for a living. That is child labor. It is illegal. Stop leaving me alone. I am too young to provide for myself. I need your guidance. Protect our nation's children. They have rights too. To learn more about children's rights, call or visit the offices of the Child Development Agency. There are a number of extracurricular activities that children participate in at the primary level. There's the Red Cross, there's 4-H and Brownies. All these teach our children valuable lessons. But recently, the Fire Wardens Club was added to the mix and lessons in safety are at the forefront. Move to right in threes. Right turn. Move to left in threes. Squad will retire. Left turn. This is not training for the cadet corps. There is a new co-curricular club in schools, the Fire Wardens Club. The Jamaica Fire Brigade has embarked on a new initiative. It involves children and is being implemented in schools across the country. The initiative is similar to that of many other school-based co-curricular programs. The only difference? This club reinforces the importance of disaster preparedness, management and restoration. The main aim is to reduce the country's susceptibility to significant damage from natural and man-made disasters. Ready? Down! Up! What to do if you close our entire the program is now being implemented in schools across the country since its inception at institutions in St. Catherine in 2017. Welcome to Greater Cornwall Primary School Fire Wardens Club. What do you feel when you feel an earthquake? Shaking. Things are shaking, yes. Things falling. Things falling, yes. And you are frightened too. When I showed you the video, did you see where the road split? And you saw cars going down into the between the Yes. We initially started with a quiz competition that went on to the primary school. So we realized that we needed something a little more tangible where we can actually have the fire wardens club in the school. The motto of the club is Preparing today for disasters tomorrow. We are preparing these students so that Whenever there's a disaster, they will be ready to help within the schools, home, and churches. So we would teach them to be ready when there's an earthquake, so they would know the, 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 the procedure, they would know the drill. We prepare them to help their schoolmates if somebody got injured and need to be moved from one place to the other. If there's a fire, we also taught them about the bucket brigade. They can get some water. You might have known that there are times when children are trapped, children are also burnt in fires. Now, if these children were taught and have some idea of what to do, the possibility that they could have helped themselves. Within the schools, a teacher is assigned to the club and for that purpose is given the title of a superintendent. Our students are very enthusiastic about the club and they get involved in many different activities as it pertains to knowing and disseminating information about disasters and disaster mitigation. One of the best agents for information are children and parents respond to children. So when the children know certain things about how to manage disasters, what are some of the right things to do, 
they can help to inform their parents and in turn the parents will inform the community members to respond and in a community like Portmore where there are so many potential disasters waiting to happen it is important that Greater Portmore at the schools in Greater Portmore know about fire wardens club and become involved in it. Fire wardens clubites are also engaged in humanitarian activities visiting children's and nursing homes. I just love how they do things. You have to do them proper and if you don't do them proper sometimes you get kicked out of the club. The fire wardens club is very fun and I get to do drills like fire safety, earthquake, tsunamis and fire drills because it helps us to blow out fires. The fire warden club teaches us to do a drill, teach us when you're to do, to what to do when your clothes is on fire. Stop, drop, cover your face and roll. It's a great club to join and I love it because you have fun and it's helping your community and schools to, to raise disaster awareness. If someone's house is being flooded out, I can help them by doing check, take them out of the house and take out the good stuff like the birth, like the birth papers and the passports. Loss of life and property as a result of natural and man-made disasters should be minimized as the Fire Wardens Club expands and more children get involved. Do you have a loved one, friend or client who passed away since 1998? The Electoral Office of Jamaica needs your help to update the voters list with information for these persons, government agencies, churches, insurance companies, hospitals and funeral homes, and you the public. We want you to provide us with the records to confirm the status of these persons. Call the EOJ at 888-991-VOTE or visit the nearest EOJ office. For more information, visit our website at ecj.com.jm. One thing I know irks almost every Jamaican is a child when I have no bra up say. A child that has no sense of respect, doesn't understand boundaries, and lacks what is considered innate to all Jamaicans, the practice of saying good morning, good evening, please, excuse me, and thank you. So in essence, because this behavior is dependent on how a child was brought up, we inevitably refer to this as bra up say. Telling you know, our talent to coin terms is pure artistry. Not very often we get a chance to meet junior broadcasters like yourself or a junior broadcaster like yourself. And so it gives me great pleasure and quite an honor to sit and talk with you today. So tell me a little bit about yourself. My life in broadcasting actually started at Almanton Primary School where the former principal, Mrs. Candley Crooksmith, identified that I had a passion in speaking. And in speaking, I mean, I was very talkative in class and she wanted me to learn how to use my voice in a positive way. So that's where I formed the Kids Hub Media Network, a nonprofit organization where we seek to give kids, twins and teens an opportunity to share their voice. And I became a part of that organization and my life in broadcasting just Change. took full speed there from there. So when you were given that opportunity, how, that, how did that make you feel? I felt amazing because now learning how to use my voice in a positive way, I am better able to interact with others, I have better communication skills mm -hmm. and I just find myself being a better individual. Do you believe that you found your passion? Yes, I have found one of my passions. One of the passions. Of journalism. Yes. But I, I just love being on camera and having a mic yes. and letting my voice be heard. 
and I also what I love about journalism is that it helps you to be a current and well-rounded individual. The opportunity which you were given to be a part of the President Obama visit to Jamaica. What are some of the other issues that you're able to deal with as a, a junior broadcaster? I mainly focus on the confidence that the young boys and girls may have in themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, bullying, we recently spoke about bullying in schools and how that affects others and just how to, to be the best you in all that you can do. And how are you able to strike a balance between, um, obviously you're doing well academically here at St. Hughes and being a junior broadcaster, how are you able to strike the balance between both? I'm doing my best at the time management because it's not an easy concept to grasp for me but I am still trying. And I just, it's just a blessing, I guess, when some people ask me, how do I manage this and multi-talents? And I just organize myself well and try to cover a lot in the time I'm giving. And so you live in a single parent household, but aren't mothers amazing to yes. provide the nurture and the care and the love and the kind of motivation? But there's something else. What is that other little thing that keeps you motivated outside of mothers? your mother's encouragement, encouraging words? I would have to say, I would have to give it all to God that he keeps me going. Because many times you're gonna feel demotivated and that you can't go on. But then you just remember where you're coming from and where you are now. And you actually feel proud of yourself, not overconfident, yes, but in that essence to say you are thankful and that you can't wait to see where you are to go in the future. So I would have to give it all to God. What is the one lesson that you've learned um, having been a junior broadcaster? And, what, what, and how has that lesson, that one lesson, changed your life or impact your life in a, in a, in a particular way? I have learned to accept failure. Um, it wasn't an easy process. Failure is any, it's not anything that anybody would be comfortable with, but it's something that goes hand in hand with success, and that's what I've learned over time being a junior broadcaster. It has just been helping me in my growth as a junior broadcaster, and just how to handle criticism, and to just, you don't take it negatively, but turn it into a positive way in order to, to bloom you, and to just be, let, allow you to become the individual that you should be. What's the one message you would like young boys and young girls who are watching this program to walk away with? To try. So that, that's what I would want them to walk away with. Never give up on your dreams and always aspire to be the best you that you can be. And to just be, aspire to achieve greatness and always put God first. And so I want to take this opportunity to say thank you so much. Yeah. And it really was a pleasure talking with you and to you. And from one broadcaster to the next, I'd like to just encourage you to continue to do what you're doing with great passion. And if you want to become successful, more successful and great in the business, then that inner passion must always be like a candle burning, never out. The flame is constantly burning that when you think about all the things that you want to accomplish, you feel so good inside and you're, you're, you're filled with so much joy. When you have that kind of passion, there's longevity. So I wish you all the very best and thank you so much for talking to us. It has been an eventful week, and in case you missed them, here's a recap of some of the top stories that made JIS News this week. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your JIS News of the Week. Jamaica has met all targets under the International Monetary Fund's precautionary standby arrangement for the period ending December 2018. The Government of Jamaica has met all 22 structural benchmarks under the standby arrangement to date, including eight macro-fiscal structural benchmarks and 14 structural benchmarks for the public sector reform program. 
Meanwhile, Jamaica's debt-to-GDP ratio is expected to reach 96% at the end of the current financial year on March 31, the country's lowest level of debt in nearly two decades. This is a national achievement of which all Jamaicans can be proud. Jamaica is the world's only example in recent times of a small country that has reduced its public debt by the equivalent of half of its gross domestic product in a short time frame without handouts, without bailouts, or without bilateral debt support from friends or partners. Government will be making $1.8 billion available for loans to micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs, in the new fiscal year. Of which $600 million is to provide loan guarantees through a credit enhancement and loan guarantee fund to MSMEs who have limited or no collateral required to access loans. There's $400 million to finance risk capital financing for MSMEs which is a four-fold increase from the 100 million in 2018-19. $20 dollars has been allocated for surveillance equipment and enforcement activities to regulate fishing in Jamaican waters. The strategy is simply to use the vessel monitoring system technology to have 24-7 information of who is legally out there and where they are. And further, even if our enforcement officers don't see them for whatever reason, intelligence from our officials who see the poachers will allow us to use the satellite imagery to narrow in on their location to increase the likelihood of apprehending them. The Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, will be making $68 million available to implement water harvesting and sanitation projects in several rural area schools. The money is to continue work on the JICA's grant assistance for grassroots human security project. Chief Justice Brian Sykes has committed to significantly cutting the waiting time for matters to be adjudicated in the courts. My vision is for our judiciary to be the best in the Caribbean region in three years and among the best in the world in six years, beginning March 1, 2019. To support this vision, I give my commitment to put in place measures so that by December 31, 2019, all outstanding judgments in the Supreme Court will be delivered. As of 2020, a judgment should be delivered within 90 days and in exceptional cases, 180 days following completion of the case. A $78 million mammography unit has been officially opened at the University Hospital of the West Indies, boasting an advanced three-dimensional imaging machine for detecting breast cancer. My understanding, of course, is that it provides a perspective that is not seen in using any other machine at this point in time. It peels off layers of the breast to identify any abnormality, abnormalities um, and therefore provides a much more accurate prescription. That's a 3D, three-dimensional approach. And the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority announced this week that the aircraft models Boeing 737-8 MAX and Boeing 737-9 MAX at the center of international scrutiny about their safety have been temporarily restricted from Jamaican airspace. The directive took effect on March 13 and is in force until further notice. And those were some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolf. Mommy? Yes, Zoe? Can we read this book? It will only take 10 minutes. Sure, sit down. Every spring, Madame Angel Wing arranges a... Do you have 10 minutes? Read with your child today. Reading with your children for just 10 minutes each day helps develop their language and listening skills, stimulates their imagination and expands their understanding of the world. So, start reading with your child today. 
Every year, the JIS team takes to schools across the island to share with students during Heritage Month. Now, a major part of the tour sees the students showcasing all kinds of talents as they celebrate our country's history. Here are some highlights from last year's JIS Heritage School Tour. The GIS is also committed to spreading awareness on national issues like our rich culture and heritage. It's the eighth staging of our annual GIS Heritage Month School Tour and as customary, we have traveled across the length and breadth of Jamaica to impart knowledge and what students showcase our rich cultural heritage. Here are the highlights. This year, the tour bus carried the heritage message to more than two dozen schools. We've split the journey in two, and on this leg, you get to witness what over half of those student bodies and the GIS team had to offer. When we come here, we become an island. We come to reach, so is we tradition. Jamaica is a place I call my homeland. We have so much to boast about all over the world. We used to float. We have sweet reggae music for rock to Bob Marley. One love remain on the tongues of the people. Trust me when I tell you, that's just a toops of what St. Anne had to offer. But with no time to spare, it's off to the cool, cool hills of North Clarendon. As customary, we conducted lively question and answer sessions, donated books and posters on aspects of our culture, and of course, were entertained by the talents of our youth. We're going to learn a little bit more about Jamaican heritage by watching a very short video that was done in the television department. And after watching attentively, the brilliant students were ready to share all they had learned. We are going to make Jamaica the place of choice to, to live, work, raise and Give yourselves a round of applause. Very good, very good, very good. Then it was time to creatively display just how much they really knew about our heritage. Nani Nani, Queen of the Hills, Mountain Blue, we honor you, strong black woman, full of pride, brave, conscious, fearless too, a superwoman in my eyes. Make our legend, it's up to you to decide. I attended the school started in 1971. Wow. You saw how long ago that, it, that was? To 1976. It was a nice experience coming inside here. I 
and our friends. Come to the jumping rocket. Light bits of fear, water for fear, and light our fears to study. The people live about Barcelona. And we are Barcelona. And what we are going to do when they raise you, light our fears to study. If you will appear to them, fear shine. This is where the magazine closes for today. I certainly hope that you enjoyed seeing the young ones on display. Remember to continue to encourage our children to be the very best that they can be. For more information on our programs, visit our website at jis.gov.jm and send us your feedback on all our social media platforms. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Theodore Henry. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.